everybody, and welcome to this next episode of the I Hate Matt Wall Poetry Podcast, where today we are going to do quite a few things. We are going to talk about my latest release, Off the Grid. We are going to maybe talk about how we memorize poems. And we may talk about passion and writing. So depending on how long some of this goes, it might be another episode. I don't know. Um, A couple personal notes right off the bat. My hair looks awful. I haven't put anything in it. I washed it like three days ago and haven't put any product in my hair. So my hair is just doing whatever the fuck my hair wants to do. Actually, right now is the best it's looked in three days. Um, which is sad, 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 sad. Anyway, so there's that. Second, I stubbed my toe walking over to my bed like a couple hours ago. Stubbed my toe and it hurt so bad. Like I kicked something under the bed or the bed post or something. Hurt so fucking bad. So I swing my big stupid oak tree leg up onto the bed to look at the damage And, of course, it's gushing blood, okay? So, that's amazing. So, um, and the white sheets are on, obviously. Why wouldn't they be? So, there's blood all over the sheets. My toe looked like I tried to kick a blender or something like that. I don't know. And then, as you do, you go into the bathroom and put... You squirt a bunch of rubbing alcohol on it. And... When all the blood finally went away, it's just like this like little tiny gash. It's not even that big of a thing. But my fucking whole leg is throbbing. My toe hurts, my fucking knee, because it's on the same leg that my knee's all fucked up on, which is probably how this whole thing happened in the first place. Uh, so there's that. Shocking. Shocking. Oh, and now the hair is doing what it wants again. So... If you hear something that sounds like a bowl of Rice Krispies, that's my radiator. We, we've talked about this before. I have a radiator, and it's boiling or bubbling or doing whatever the fuck it is it does. But before we start talking about off the grid, we have some things to do. We have some things that we got to take care of, that we always take care of at the beginning. Because we do not procrastinate when it comes to certain things, like giving this podcast five stars wherever you listen to podcasts or wherever it's available. You, you just got to do it. If you don't do it, you're, you're robbing me. You're stealing from me. Whatever. Maybe. But next, what we have to do is give a big ass thank you to all the motherfuckers who help this fucking show out. So... All of my good, good buddies over on Patreon, I want to give a big thank you to Chase, to Michael, to Deborah, to Cedar, to Harry. Thank you guys so much. You guys are amazing. Now for the thank you crew over on YouTube, I want to give a big thank you to Patrick, to Britt, to JH. You guys are awesome. And JH has um, a bit of a little present that um, we might be talking about on here soon. Just... I'm, I'm hitchcocking you for no real reason, but it'll be awesome. And then, to the big swinging pendulums over at the Goddamn Anarchy crew. Let's talk about them. Let's give a big thank you to Bunny, to Nate, to Mindy, to Hannah, to Thomas, to Tim, to Lisa, to Josh, to Alan, to Jessica, to Shaylin, to Caitlin, and to Andrew. Thank you guys so much. You guys are fucking awesome. And honestly, when Poetic Anarchy Volume 3 gets here, which will be Wednesday, which should be the day that this podcast goes out, I can't wait to start showing everybody all the cool shit you guys have been doing. And then last but not least, I want to give the biggest of all thank yous over to the SDG and the Chapbook of the Month Club, the number one chappy. Yes, thank you. Thank you. So if you would like to join the Chapbook of the Month Club, if you would like to join the Anarchy Crew, if you would like to join the Thank You Crew and be able to see my gorgeous face when I'm doing this show, you need to go over to youtube.com slash at Matt Wall, click the join button, pick your tier, pick your poison, but do what's right. And then if you would like to just 
throw me some bucks because you like it, go over to patreon.com slash Matt Wall, and you can do that there. Okay? Wonderful. Now, also, before um, I forget, I just want everyone to know, this Friday, this Friday, at the Garage Poets, yours truly, Two Thumbs, Matt Wall, is going to be the featured poet at the um, Garage Poets Open Mic Night, which I believe starts at 8 o'clock Eastern, I think. Um, So there's that. If you would like to join in on the Open Mic Night, there is a Zoom link um, if you go over to their page or on Facebook to be able to jump in the Zoom and do some reading yourself. So that would be really fucking cool. I would love to see you guys there. So um, for... I think most of the stuff is done through their Facebook, but um, I pretty much follow them on YouTube. So again, it's youtube.com slash at the garage poets. Almost positive. There will be a link down below of the preamble. All of the preface. No, let me let me go into some of this a little bit more. Some of you have um, heard if you come to my live streams on YouTube and stuff like that about the projects that I have coming up this year. And there are quite a few. Um, There is this Poetic Anarchy volume is coming out this week. Volume 4 is coming out in the spring. Volume 5 is coming out in the summer. Volume 6 would be coming out in the fall. So that's exciting. Um, I want to do those seasonally. And then I have um, some, besides having the chapbooks, which we're going to be talking about in a bit, um... I have some book books coming out, some book books, and both of these projects, I don't know how I'm going to do them. I haven't decided yet. I'm still on the fence, Um, but the last two poetry collections in paperback that I put out, I put out through um, crowdfunding campaigns, and the first one I did, The End of Everything, um, that one did not hit its goal, but I raised enough money to be able to put the book out and fulfill all the orders. It's just the book wasn't as long as I wanted it to be. We've talked about this. Um, the next one I put out, and the end of everything was all new poems. Um, but Fingering the Mundane, that was a collection of five chapbooks of mine that were out of print. And another, a sixth chapbook that I never released. So that one was kind of a chunker. I think it's like 300 pages or something like that. And um, that one, we did hit our goal. Um, But because of how big the book was and how bad my planning was, I didn't, I wasn't able to order enough copies of that like I wanted to. But all the orders were fulfilled and everything like that um it's just that i don't have like a stockpile of them like i do with the end of ever or did with the end of everything so the first run of fingering the mundane is out of print but you could get a print on demand version of that on amazon if you want now one of the things that makes what i do special i think is the not necessarily just handmade nature, but the personal touch that all of my stuff has. And we're going to be talking about that when we start talking about chapbooks in a bit here. And so I have two books that are going to be coming out this year at least. One is um, a collection of new poems. And then one is a kind of craft book about poetry that um, basically follows very closely to the poetic anarchy um, thing. Um, It's not everything you get out of poetic anarchy, but a lot of the main things, that's what that book's going to be. And so I was thinking about both of these and I was like, I really want to put these out the way like I put out my chapbooks. Like I love putting out chapbooks because I get to make them. I get to 
decide what kind of paper I use. I get to do all this stuff. I get to mail them. I get to like do fun shit with the packaging and all this other stuff. When I put Fingering the Mundane up on Amazon, like it was just so fucking uneventful. It, at least for me. And then I was thinking about all the other books because I've written like 50 fucking books, okay? And most of those have only been ebooks. Like I don't have paperbacks of a lot of those. I have paperbacks of some of them, but not all of them. And even the ones I have paperbacks of, like it wasn't an event. I like things to be a fucking big deal. You know, I like making everything feel like everyone's a part of it even though it's my book but just like having everyone feel like they're a part of something in doing a crowdfunding campaign the money goes into making the fucking product it goes into getting everything shipped to me so i could like sign and number everything and then ship it out to everybody else and then depending on the size of the book because again like end of everything was 100 pages and fingering the mundane was like 320 or something fucking stupid like that the cost of printing fingering the mundane was a lot more than the end of everything and it was way more than i thought so it it was a good thing that um we hit our goal or else like that would have been a fucking train wreck so anyway i've been going back and forth with do i put out the next poetry collection as um, a crowdfunding thing or do I just do it on Amazon or do I do the crowdfunding thing and if it doesn't hit its goal do I just put it out on Amazon that would be a good way to do it that's safe fuck it I'll just do that okay cool we just we just figured it out so at least for the poetry collection I'll do that but I really see that's the whole thing I, that I don't know which one I want to put out first. I don't know if I want to put the poetry collection out first or if I want to put the craft book out first. Maybe I should put them both out at the same time. That's fucking stupid. Maybe I should. Fuck it. Do a crowdfunding campaign for two books at once. Anyway, long story short, I finished the cover for um, the collection. As far as it... Well, okay, the book is titled Winner of Your Mom's Sodomy Prize for Poetry. Yeah. So um, that's what the collection's called. And then um, the craft book is called Poetry is Bullshit. Anyway, whatever. Um, so let's get into the show. And we'll talk about chat books. Was that annoying? I bet it was. It annoyed me, so probably definitely annoyed you okay so if you were at my last live stream um you know a lot about the off the grid book if you follow me on youtube at all from the day you're seeing this yesterday you would have seen the short video talking about um off the grid if you're a part of the anarchy crew you watch the making of this book okay so lots of different things to find out here but people ask me about chat books all the time. Like, why do I do it? Why do I like them? Why do I put them out so frequently? And all that shit. And it's basically like a why not thing. Like, I write a lot. I enjoy the stuff that I write. People buy the stuff that I write. Um, it seems like a pretty symbiotic relationship, you know? Um I enjoy creating. I'm a fucking mad scientist. I talk about this a lot. Like, I fucking take dead things and breathe life into them. You know, like, I grew up watching Frankenstein, so maybe that has a little bit to do with it. Um, I just love the idea. And it's it's good for me on a creative basis. Now, I'm not saying everyone should put a chapbook out every month, you know. But it's good for me on a creative thing because each month I'm like, what's this month going to be? What's this month about? What's this month going to do? And it's like I go through all the shit, you know? And so, like, um, each month becomes an event, you know? Even for me, like, creating, you know? Like, what's going to be, you know? So I just, I fucking dig it. I love it so much. And then, like, you get into, like, marketing and 
you know, how are you getting your stuff out there and all this other stuff. And then because I'm starting to have the, the press be a little bit more than what it's been, you know, which is basically just the thing I say when I talk about what's putting out, you know, my chat books or the blood rag or, um, my ebooks or paperbacks or whatever. So I understand that I'm kind of an anomaly when it comes to this. And I'm not saying that to blow my dick or nothing like that. I'm just saying it like, if I didn't do this stuff, I would have like creative blue balls. I don't know how else to say it. Whenever I've been in situations where I couldn't like create and put something out, I get bunged up. Like I get like fucking creatively constipated, you know, like I need to stay regular guys. Like putting out chat books every month is my Metamucil, you know, it's like, I have to do this. I have to like release, you know, like, and fucking more ways than one, dude. That's just how I roll. <laughs> oh, fuck. You know, but like, I, I think, especially with poetry, there's this fucking ridiculous concept. And yes, it dates back to Horace, where like the last thing a poet should do is ever show anyone something that they did. You know, and then if that's the case, then how is it that poets have work out there? You know, and then you have, I don't know, and then you just go back and forth with people who are like, well, is it shit? Is your poetry shit? And I ask you, is your poetry shit? You know, it's like, again, it's beauties in the eye of the beholder. You know, like I've seen some of the people you guys are fucking dating or married to. Jesus Christ, what are you thinking? You know? And a couple of you, way punching above your weight. What the fuck are they thinking? You know? And poems are the same way. Every poem is someone's favorite poem. <laughs> like, you can't disprove it, so shut the fuck up. Like, it's a very probable situation. You know? So enough about all that. Let's talk about what the fuck Off the Grid is. So Off the Grid is my... January 2023 chapbook. And this is probably the last chapbook that I'm going to put out of my desert poems. Now, I lived in the desert for two and a half years, around about. And um, I wrote a lot of poetry while I was there. This book, there are some poems in here that are about me leaving the desert. And this just kind of closes that chapter in my life, you know? And it's kind of emotional for me, but the idea with the cover is that I had this grid on here, and there's only 26 copies of this because that's how much um, orange cardstock I had left. And I wanted to make sure that each one of these was different than the next, Okay, so every one of 26 is unique. So the titles are different on each one. Like, for, I mean, if, if you're watching this video, you've already seen the other video. Um, so if you haven't seen any of the videos, basically the words move through the grid on the different copies of the book. So no one will have the same copy that you have. They're one of a kind. So a couple things about this book as far as like production goes this is the longest chat book i put out since uh acid acid and um ingrown air were fucking huge those were like both over 60 pages acid might have been 50 but um ingrown air was like 64 or something fucking ridiculous like that but um, most of the chat books i put out are 32 pages and this one, for me to fit all the poems in here that I wanted to put in here, um, is 36 pages. But it's newsprint, interior, and um, orange cardstock cover. And the other thing about this is that this is the last of, like, my second phase of chapbooks. Because when I started this venture, um, after I left the desert and moved back to Big Bear, I went out and bought a ton of different cardstock. 
like all different colors, all different um, weights and all this shit. This is the last book that I could put out from that first batch of cardstock. So this is the last of my chapbooks that are going to look like this. The, the next batch, they're going to be similar, but there's going to be more flourish, a little more pizzazz in them. I'm up in the game a little bit here, guys. So that will start with the next chapbook. So again, this is like the end of an era for me. It's the, the last of my desert poems. It's the last of my phase two oh. chapbooks. Um, for those of you who don't know, the first like 10, or actually if you count Weird Mask, my zines and shit in there too, probably the first 50 different titles that I put out were just all on 20 pound white paper and the covers were the same as the interiors kind of thing. Like, so all my friends are dead, exhausted bird, ingrown air, acid, DNF'd, um, my short story collections, um, and then like M zine, time Mazine, weird mask, R V G Z, Cinna, whatever that one was called, my movie one. All those were just like paper. So um, moving to cardstock was like a big jump, and and it like really upped the quality, which I liked a lot. And now I'm gonna up the quality again. So I'm just excited. So I'm going to go through here, find a poem or two to read to y'all. Wonderful. I love that. I love when I open up my book and I realize that I have a typo. Motherfucker. I read through these. I fucking did it twice out loud. I have a foe instead of of. Maybe I'll leave it. I got to knock that shit off. <sighs> that pisses me off. Okay, so the time machine. I drank two bottles of wine. Thought about a time 20 years ago. I was there. It was ridiculous. I was really there. And when my wife told me to turn on the Jenny, I came out of it and was confused. I thought I was back in the city of Orange 20 years ago. I didn't know where I was. It was so weird. I really thought I was back there feeding ducks in the pond. I was drunk. That was drunk. But now I'm drunk and trying to come to terms with being 20 years in the future and trying to turn on a fucking generator while my wife crocheting, making a blanket, and I, drunk on wine, leaning on the stove, smoking a cigarette in the middle of the desert, not knowing what the fuck is going on. Ah, <sighs> good times. Oh, that one's gonna make me emotional. I'm not gonna read that. Okay, this one's fun. I like this one a lot. This is called The Nuts of a Ground Squirrel. Sitting here, laptop on my lap, typing away, I hear rustling outside in the trash. I look out the screen door, see a ground squirrel digging a hole, placing something in, then covering up the hole and rustling again. It's in the trash, collecting my scraps for feasting later. I never noticed it before, but that squirrel has balls. The little tiny furry sack of nuts hanging between his legs. He stands up on two legs, looks at me indifferently, then goes back into the trash. I get up to look at him. He stands up out of the top of the trash on his two legs, with a damn pretzel stick hanging out of his mouth like a fucking cigar. Motherfucker, I say. He takes off, bouncing over the sand, through the fence, with that stogie hanging between his lips. Why can't I dig through trash cans with no clothes on, with my balls hanging out, looking at others indifferently? It's because of our upbringing. Our pretend religious guilt. I hate that squirrel because of who he is and because of who I am not. In the distance, the squirrel stands up again on two legs, grabs the pretzel from his mouth, and blows out a perfect smoke ring. Okay, I will read one more. This is called The Lesser Goldfinch and Me. When blasting the trailer, I thought for sure it would tip on the creosote outside. A lesser goldfinch wrestled the harsh gusts. It held on as the bush looked as if it was doing the limbo. I knew nothing of the lesser goldfinch. Turns out they are migratory birds. 
that are found among the West Coast from Washington to Venezuela. I saw it as a sign. What freedom that bird has. I decided that I would backpack down the coast walking to South America. My family laughed. Is it so stupid? Walk along the beach, fish when I'm hungry, sleep when I'm sleepy, write on my phone, take a little solar pack for power, have an adventure, an experience. Is this what is known as a midlife crisis? I think me crushing a man's windpipe for talking loudly in the grocery store line would be a larger crisis. So yeah, so that is some poems out of Off the Grid by me. <sighs> so if you have any questions about chapbooks, putting chapbooks together, why you should put chapbooks out at all, if you think you have enough stuff to put out, whatever, just hit me up and let me know. And I will answer your questions. Oh yeah, but Off the Grid is out now up at my Etsy shop. Links in the description. So what I want to talk to you guys about is this. One from None by Henry Rollins. Um, if you saw the book haul I did where I picked this up again, um, you will know what I'm talking about, but I want to have a, a conversation about this now. So the story about this is I got this book when I was 14. Um, I think in that video I said 16, but then after thinking about it, I think it was 14. It had to have been. Anyway, so I got this book and it was my favorite book. I read it all the time, cover to cover. And in 10th grade, there was a poetry reading that we were doing for our English class. And we set the library up like a coffee shop and had coffee and like I played songs on my guitar and a bunch of people read poetry and I read a poem and all this other shit. One of the songs I did, because this was um, not horribly long after the Nirvana Unplugged came out. So I did um, uh, Jesus Don't Want Me for a Sunbeam for that. So that was fun. And there's a video of this somewhere. Like somebody had it. Like someone recorded all of this whole thing. Probably the teacher. So whatever. That's the thing. Anyway. So I recited a poem. And the thing was, we were supposed to memorize the poems that we recited. So this was the poem I did. Um, it was from this book. And it was, this is how it went. I want to take a screwdriver, mutilate my face, find a woman who loves me for who I am, then say I don't need it and walk away. Okay? That's the poem. That was my favorite poem. I thought that was so fucking cool. And I'm just like, fuck yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Whole fucking thing. I, that poem has stuck with me ever since I was fucking like 15. I think it was when I was 15. Yeah, probably. Because 16, I was already doing a million different things. <clears throat> but um, one of those million things I was doing was um, becoming a born-again Christian. And when you do that from not being from a religious family at all, one of the things they, depending on which denomination you're a part of, they tell you to do is get rid of everything you own that does not edify the Lord. <clears throat> get rid of all secular belongings. So, like a dumbass, I fucking got rid of everything I owned, including this book. Rest of my adult life, up until this moment, has been me trying to get back all the shit I got rid of when I was fucking 15 years old. Um, I'm pretty fucking close, but there, I, there's, still, there's, there's still holes in my fence. Mm, bad analogy. Okay, so this whole idea... I want to take a screwdriver and mutilate my face, find a woman who loves me for who I am, and then say I don't need it and walk away. Okay? The poem. I wanted to see how close I was to being accurate all these years later. And it turns out I wasn't. So here is the poem from Henry Rollins' book, One From None. I want to take a screwdriver, mutilate my face, find a beautiful woman... Make her love me for what I am. Then say I don't need it and walk away. So, the lines that I 
have been misspeaking for all these years was uh, I never said find a beautiful one. I said find a woman. Okay? I apparently have lesser standards than Hank does here. And then I said find a woman to love me for who I am. Okay? So he wants to find a beautiful woman and make her love him for what he is. So he's going to make her love him. And I just wanted the love. But I wanted it for who I am, not what I am. He wants it for what he is, not who he is. Is there a difference? What is the difference? Okay. Now, on a subconscious level, why do we sometimes change the words of poems? Is it simply like I misspoke? Or is it something bigger than that? Is it something legitimate like... Um, I don't like what I am. I like who I am, you know? Like, is it something like that? Is it the fact that I don't care if I find a beautiful woman, I just want a woman, does that mean I have no standards? Like, what are these things? What are, like, why do we do this? Is it subconscious or is it just a fuck up? What do you think? Send in emails. I hate Mountwall gmail.com. Let me know. Because this, like has been like totally like boggling my mind. And because it's been so long, like it could just be that's how I remembered it. Like I don't want to say that this poem shaped my life, but this was my favorite poem. I fucking quoted it all the fucking time, recited it all the fucking time. Like whenever anyone talked about poetry, okay? And I was wrong. And when I did the video of the book haul where I talked about this, I was like, you know what? I like mine better. I do like mine better. But do I like it better because that's me? Did I like appropriate this poem and change it to me? This is all some like heavy duty shit. Like did this poem, the way I remember it, shape my adult life? Now, that's getting really fucking deep in the weeds here, but could it? I don't know. It might have. Probably not, but it could have. You know? This is fucking crazy. Have you ever done this where you had a poem that you thought was the greatest poem ever and you recited it all the fucking time just to find out that you were saying it wrong? Why were you saying it wrong? Did you like your version better than the poets? This is some shit, dude. I'm not fucking with you. This is some fucking shit right here. I'm telling you, this could get fucking some heavy duty shit. I'm telling you. All right, so whatever. Um, well, send in your comments. Let me know what you think about this because I obviously need fucking help now. Um, this this is just too much for me. Like, have I destroyed the course of my life by saying that poem wrong and repeating it over and over again to? push me down a trajectory that I never would have gone down before. And I mean, as far as like the, the women stuff, I've done okay. You know? So I don't think it's like, like, I'm like, Oh, I, I didn't want beautiful women. I, I'm not, I'm not talking about that part of it. I'm talking about making someone love you. That's weird. And I'm glad I left that out of my version of it, but who to what is there a difference there? Because, like, yes, there's a difference because of the words. But then I think about it, and I'm like, well, I could kind of say it poorly for both things and make it sound like the same thing. But is it the same thing? So hopefully you guys are all stoned, and I just fucking blew your mind. And you guys are like, fuck! You know? But if you're not stoned, you're like, Jesus Christ, can you fucking get over it? It's a fucking poem, and you fucked up, you stupid piece of shit. <laughs> Oh, fuck me, dude. That's fucking hysterical. Oh, good times. Okay, how long are we? That's what she asked. Okay, yeah, let's just let's just get into the fucking butt plugs here. So, butt plugs. Make sure on Friday at 8 o'clock Eastern p.m. that you are at the Garage Poets, either on Facebook or on YouTube, so you can see me do a reading as the featured poet, dude. But then also, you guys can all do open mic night, too, and read a poem or two, you know? 
So make sure you get over there. Um, links again will be down below. Um, Off the Grid is out now at my Etsy shop. There's only 26 copies, and this is going to be probably the last small batch run I do of anything. Like, everything else from now is going to be a much larger run. So for those of you who want to be collectors and do all that shit, all of the chapbooks I have out before this one and this one, these are like the low-run books. So you got to get them if you're going to get them. Okay, because they do go, this one's already going quickly. All right, so be that as it may, um, go over to my Etsy shop and pick that up. Pick up the new Blood Rag issue seven out now. Tons of cool shit in that. That is the fastest selling um, Blood Rag issue that I have. So um, kudos for that, all of you who've been picking that up. Um, also, let me see what else. Oh, if you would like to do mentorship, if you want to talk to me for an hour about like one-on-one -on -one and talk about your career, what to do, where to go next, what's the next step for you. If you want to like just shoot the shit with me and have me help you put together some sort of plan for your future in writing or filmmaking or music or any of the arts that I have any kind of fucking knowledge about, hit me up and let me know. Go to IHateMattWall.com slash mentorship or just send me an email to IHateMattWall.gmail.com and tell me what's troubling you. And um, if I can help you, I will tell you and we will set up a call. Um, and also, if you're having a book launch and you want to put together what to do to have a successful launch, let me know that as well and I will help you out any way that I can. Um, and then let's see, if you want to join the Anarchy Crew, which is what you should do, um, because you're no fucking slouch. If you're listening to this, you're like, yeah, dude, I'm fucking, I'm in. Okay, so you go to youtube.com slash at Matt Wall, click the join button. Actually, there's probably a link in the description here. It'll just take you right there. And join the Anarchy Crew. There are over 100 videos of um, lessons, of assignments. There's daily writing prompts, there's weekly live streams that are members only, um, and then we do cool little projects like Poetic Anarchy Volume 3, which will be out today probably, as long as there's no problems with the proof. Um, and if it is, I will put a link down below, so that'll be how you know. There'll be a link down below if it's available. Chapbook of the Month Club, you get everything I put out um, each month as it comes out. Go do that. Um, make sure you subscribe to me on YouTube. I put stuff up there every day as well. Um, oh, and then as far as like the Anarchy Crew, um, like I was saying earlier, on the Friday members only live stream, I was starting to put together the Off the Grid book. And then the video for this week for assignment stuff and like lessons was doing the finishing touches to all that stuff and going through everything I go through when I put together. Um, chat book so hopefully you can put out your own chat book it all comes full circle full circle full full circle full circle so any questions and comments um, send them to i hate matt wall gmail.com the um, q a episode um, or if there is any questions if there's not i'll just do another episode but it should be saturday so if you have any questions um, make sure to get them in as soon as possible, because I'll probably record on Thursday or Friday. So, you know, Bob's your uncle. All right. So until next time, everybody, type hard, keep buying my books, and I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. And thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.